Hey guys, welcome back to my channel today. We are talking about how to increase the amount of fat you are eating when following the ketogenic diet. All of that is coming up. So welcome, I'm so excited to have you guys here to talk about this topic today. Um, this is one thing that people ask me all the time. How do I get enough fat when following the ketogenic diet? They worry about this because it can be really difficult when you're initially getting started on this and especially if you're used to following a low fat sort of diet in the past and then all of a sudden you have to shift gears and be eating mostly fat. This can be like a huge change for a lot of people. So I'm gonna give you my top ways to do this, but also if you're brand new to this lifestyle, I really don't want you stressing out too much about the fats because um, the really the big thing that matters is the net carbs. The net carbs matter the most and that's just through extensive research I've done. Of course you want to be giving your body plenty of fat so that it's burning the fat. Um, you're changing your metabolism so you need to give your body some fuel otherwise you're going to be starving yourself. You definitely don't want to be doing a low fat and low carbohydrate diet because you're going to literally be starving yourself. You don't want that to happen. You don't want it to impact your metabolism you want to be burning fat, but you also want to um, have an amazing metabolism that's burning a lot of calories so that when you reach your goal, you are not gonna gain it back. You're going to maintain. And this is a lifestyle just like anything else. So you want to really adopt it into your, your lifestyle in a way that, that you can continue on with and follow. So if you're just getting started, don't stress out if you have, if you're maybe not getting enough fat to begin with, but to give you some ideas on how to up the fat, here are the tips. So you want to make sure that the foods that you're making include fat in the food. You don't want to just be like making something and then trying to get in fat afterwards. And a lot of times people will do like fat bombs and stuff to increase their fat, but you can get into trouble with that if you're going way over in calories. Because even with the ketogenic diet, calories in, calories out still matter. If you're not burning the amount of calories you're consuming, you're going to either maintain or gain, gain weight. It doesn't matter if you're eating tons of fat or if you're eating tons of carbohydrates, it's the same thing. Your body's gonna burn what it has to work with and any sort of deficit beyond that. So if like you're eating a thousand calories a day but your body's burning 1500 calories a day, this is just an example, totally not real. But if that was happening, then you would be losing weight because your body would be burning more calories than you're taking in. So to get more fat to help you balance your macros with a ketogenic diet, it's supposed to be 70%, right around 70% of your total calories for the day coming from fat. I do have a beginner's guide how to start keto video here on my channel. I'll put the little card up top here to check that out afterwards so you can get a little bit of an understanding on the basics, but to do this, you need to be incorporating more fats into the foods that you're making, into the meals that you're creating. So let's say you have, you're making like a tuna salad. You want to be adding mayonnaise to the tuna, upping your fat there in the meal, not just like putting tuna on lettuce, a bed of lettuce, and maybe having some oil and vinegar for dressing. Add the extra fats in there with that meal. That's a great opportunity to be able to do that. The other thing is a lot of people will be adding in extra cheese to try to get the extra fat in there. And while that can work, I don't want you guys to become dependent on too much dairy products, too much cheese, because sometimes people can think, okay, I need more, I need more dairy, or not more dairy, but I need more fat, so I'm gonna add more cheese. But cheese can be a problem for a lot of people. I myself, I'm going through this whole thing where I'm trying to shift away from the dairy to see how my body's doing, and I gotta tell you guys, it's been like amazing and life-changing. I have my kids home today, so they're gonna be interrupting me. What do you need, Peter? Tuna sandwich. Okay, I'll make you a tuna sandwich right after my video, okay? One minute, okay? okay. Promise. Okay, so um, next thing a lot of people do is they will eat like drink like a fat coffee. This is great if that fat coffee is one of your meals because where people get into trouble is they eat normally throughout the day and then they try to add fat coffee or the fat bombs to up their fats. But what happens is you're gonna go way overboard, way too much in that situation. But you can use a fat coffee like Bulletproof Coffee. I love Keto Cream. It's an amazing way to just quickly shake 
shake it up with some hot coffee. You don't have to go through the whole process of adding collagen and all of those things. Fat coffee is basically where you add butter, MCT oil, coconut oil to coffee. You blend it up. It makes like a really good um, beverage that tastes amazing, but also it helps you add a bump up the fats. But you don't want to be doing that in addition to just regularly eating what you would regularly eat just to get more fats in there because you're going to be going way overboard because that fat coffee can take up literally your whole day's worth of fat if you're not careful. So um, you can drink that, you can do that if it's one of your meals in your day and you count it into your macros to make sure you're balanced. Um, so that's a good way to get extra fat in there because that type of meal, you know, if you want to use it like a meal, is very high in fat, very low in protein, very low in carbohydrates, none basically. So. Um, that's one way to do that. The fat bombs, same situation. So a lot of people will use fat bombs because they look at their, their macros and they say, okay, I have 1400 calories in my day, which that is my limit. That's the most I can have today. Everyone's different guys. Just be aware of that. I do have a calculator on my blog. If you click the link in the profile, 24karatketo.com, I do have a calculator where you can check out how many calories you should be eating. It's a macro calculator. So, um, a lot of times people will will see that and they'll see, okay, I reached my calorie goal, but I didn't reach my fat goal. And so then they will they will then eat more fat to balance that macro thing out, but then they're gonna be way over in calories. I want you guys to learn how to add in the extra fats in the foods you're creating, in the foods you're making, in the meals you're making. So that you're not looking at it afterwards thinking, how do I get in more fat now? The day's over. Um, so, Ideally, you don't want to snack. You want to have two to three meals at most per day. You want to go long periods in between the foods you're eating and eat larger meals. And so um, we talked about dairy a little bit. You definitely can add dairy as long as you don't have a, a problem with that yourself. If you find yourself stalling out on your weight loss efforts, try scaling back on the dairy first thing. That would be what I would recommend. If you're not eating dairy, you can add lots of guacamole to basically every single meal. That's what I've been doing. It's been working out amazingly and it helps you get the extra fats that you need. It will keep you full and it makes your meal more satisfying. It's really good to do that. You can also add oils to the foods you're eating, butters to the foods you're eating. Like just really focus in on how you're preparing the foods. Um, if you're making a steak, put garlic butter on top of that steak. You'll find yourself eating less of the steak because it's going to be more filling because you have that butter. Sour cream is great to add to the top of even steaks. The types of meats you're choosing, you need to be looking at that because if you're choosing meats with high fat content, you're going to be getting the fat in the foods you're eating in the situation there compared to the tuna and the chicken where that's very lean, you're not gonna have a lot of fat to that, it's more fat you need to add on top of that. Okay, so if you're doing ground beef, like an 80% lean ground beef, burger, that sort of thing, um, um, your steaks, same thing, plenty of marbleization in your steaks if you're looking at your steaks in the grocery store. And that's pretty much what you want to be looking for as far as your meat's concerned. So basically this is how I structure my day. I start my day with intermittent fasting. Um, I drink exogenous ketones because I love the way it helps me and, and how I feel, but then I break my fast right around noon-ish, um, sometimes 1 p.m., depending on the day, sometimes later, depending on how busy I am. But basically, most of the time, I go 16 hours, and then I break my fast with typically a bulletproof coffee, or I will have a meal, depending on myself and what I feel like. So I'll do like a keto cream, or just butter and coffee and stevia and blended, and I will have that. And then a couple hours later, I will have like my first meal meal. And then in my first meal meal, I will do like a salad with tuna, like I mentioned before, like if you take a can of tuna and you mix that up with lots of mayo and you can put, um, if you're eating cheese, you can put cheese on there. You want to drizzle plenty of olive oil on there and then some vinegar as well. I love it with um, green olives, which is also a great source for healthy fats for you in there. You can add veggies to that, like sliced onion, not too much, but, but a little bit is good. Um, tomatoes, same thing, not too much, but a little bit is good, right? Just don't go over board on that sort of thing, you'll be great. So I make like a salad like that and then 
my, my next meal, my last meal will be my dinner. And in that case, I'm making for my husband, we will we'll do like a steak, like I mentioned before. I'll put butter on that, garlic butter on that, a side of um, either green beans with butter, garlic butter, or I will do like a mashed cauliflower. If I'm eating dairy, because I'm kind of doing like a low dairy, if I am eating dairy on that day, um, then I'll add sour cream to that, I will add a little bit of cheese to that, and some butter. Um, that's basically how you do it. A lot of times when people get involved in the ketogenic diet, they get so connected to eating a ton of dairy that they... Um, they miss out on a lot of the other amazing things that you can be eating with a ketogenic diet. From a lot of the research that I've been doing, it really shows the benefit of cutting your dairy intake way down because sometimes, and especially for me, I'm not judging you guys, trust me, because this was me, this was totally me, I was eating just so much dairy. And I'm gonna do an entire video on this eventually on more on how to follow the ketogenic diet without dairy or very low dairy. Um, that's all coming up, but I think a lot of times people will get in stalls with the ketogenic diet and they're, the pr primary foods that they're eating is a lot of cheese, a lot of dairy. And if you cut that out, you will notice a huge difference. So how do you do that and get in the fats you need? I'm telling you guys the guacamole. The nuts though, however, you can do nuts, but in my opinion, it's so easy to just snack too much on nuts, go way overboard, literally go nuts on nuts, and get yourself into trouble. So, back to the topic of this video, we're talking about how to get more fats in your day following the ketogenic diet. That's really my main tip. Don't try to add the fats second, like after the thought, after already eating the food. You get through your day, your, your macros aren't balanced, you have a little bit higher protein in your, in your little um, diagram than you want and not as much fat as you want. Don't stress about it. Tomorrow is a totally new day. It's okay, you're not gonna screw everything up. You're perfectly fine. Just as long as you make sure your net carbs are within range, then you're great. And then the next day, just consider when you're making something, how can you add more fats into the food you're preparing in that initial meal so that you don't end up at the end of the day trying to get an extra fat in there. So um, for sure, adding avocados to the meal, the foods that you're eating, to the meals that you're eating, the mayonnaise to the foods, butter your, add butter to your foods. Don't add anything low fat. You want nothing low fat. When, people, when companies make low fat things, they're adding sugar to that. You don't want that, okay? So um, make sure you have full fat um, products that you're consuming Bacon is a great way to get lots of extra fat in there. If you're making eggs, make sure you're cooking your eggs in butter. Don't just cook them with like that spray that sprays down the pan. Add butter to that. Um, don't try to bump up your fats at the end if you need, you know, like I mentioned before, if you need to balance your thing because you're going to go over calories, which if you're too many calories, you're going to gain the weight, right? Okay, so these are just my tips. If you have something that you do to help you get in more fat, I would love to hear it below. Or if you even have a recipe for a fat bomb or a fat coffee or something like that that you love, I would love to hear it in comments below. Um, or if this is something you struggle with, I'd love to hear that as well. Or if you've totally mastered the art of balancing your macros perfectly, I'd love to hear how you do it because that is one thing that is really a big struggle for a lot of newbies getting into this lifestyle. So pop that into comments and we'll have a discussion about it. Thanks guys for being here today and watching this video. I hope I help you in some way. I have tons of tips and tricks right here on this channel. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and if this helps you, you know, and you love the content, and you know some people that need the help, be sure to share this with them. And um, if you're looking for a calculator so that you can figure out your um, how many calories you should be consuming so that you are losing weight, as well as the macros and all of that, I do have the link on my blog in description, 24 karat.